The following tones conclude this test of the emergency alert system. Open lines at 11 o'clock for you. Sound off open lines. Many, many stories to talk with you about. At 10 o'clock, we're going to sit back and have some fun, some giveaways. Every Wednesday at 10, Jimmy Cristo joins me, and we give things away for free. Why not? The Pope today condemned stars such as Victoria and David Beckham for sporting crucifixes as fashion accessories because they contradict the spirit of the gospel. Beckham has often worn a Theophanel diamond crucifix. The Vatican, which named Jennifer Aniston, Naomi Campbell, Catherine Zeta-Jones among the culprits, saying that... Is it right to spend thousands on a sacred symbol of Christianity and then, in a non-Christian manner, forget those who suffer and die from hunger in the world? Also today, the Reverend Jeffrey Windy, a 31-year-old, faces up to 20 years in prison and up to a million dollars in fines when he is sentenced August 22nd. He was allowed to remain under house arrest at his parents' home in Peru, Illinois. Why? In a plea agreement, Windy and five others pleaded guilty. This is a priest now to conspiracy to manufacture and distribute GHB as well as possession with the intent to distribute the drug. This drug is called the date rape drug. A suspended Roman Catholic priest pleads guilty to conspiring to manufacture and distribute the date rape drug known as GHB. You know, following 9-11, a lot of us packed our nation's churches, didn't we? Seven months later, attendance has nosedived. Why? What has happened? This hour, my guest is Martin Zender. We're talking about his book, How to Quit Church Without Quitting God. Martin, welcome to the show, and I have a feeling some people may get a little upset with you tonight, Mr. Zender. Um, if I do my job, they will. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit, if we can, about uh, who you are and your background, if you would. Um, I wrote a book for spiritually disgruntled people. I think there's a spiritual revolution in this country, Georgia. I think there's a lot of people on the on the fringe who are spiritual, but they see through the institution. You know, they're, they're telling themselves something's rotten in Pewland, and um, they're worshiping God on their own. So what I'm doing in my book is I'm, I'm giving them scriptural recourse. I'm showing them that the scriptures are actually in support of a freelance walk with God and that the concept of, quote, going to church is not even in the scriptures. Now, um, I suppose that's radical enough. Uh, my background, I was raised in the Catholic Church, and I was told there that Jesus Christ actually lived uh, in a gold box behind the altar. And I remember, I think I was the one in second grade that raised my hand and asked, asked uh, one of the nuns, I said, D -d -d you know, does he have curtains? Uh, does he have a nice chair? I, I took him seriously. Oh, sure, sure. You know, I really took that in a very serious way. When you're in second grade, you do. And, and so I, I think that people today, especially after 911, uh, they're rebelling against God in a box. And that, eventually, uh, when I got old enough and started looking into scriptures, I'll and I began my own freelance walk, and it's uh, it's been that way ever since. That was gee, about 22 years ago now. Do you consider yourself spiritual now? Yes. You do. Yeah, and which probably you know distinguish between religion and spirituality. Well, and there is a big difference there. <clears throat> oh yeah, huge difference. Yeah, there is. Uh, in fact, I'm convinced that spirituality can leave organized religion today and business would go on as as usual because there are so many other props you know they have the ceremonies and the music and the icons you were just mentioning the crosses and a lot of that stuff can carry on the program you know and spirituality can go out the glass the glass the stained glass window and uh, nobody will notice and i think that's happening in churches in america and i think that most people, uh, the spiritually sensitive people are seeing that, and they're saying, hey, we're going to worship God elsewhere. Are, are you opposed to all, all um, organized religion? Well, I'm opposed to all religion. Now, that, I want to qualify that, because religion, really, even in the scriptures, this surprises people, George, but even in the scriptures, religion is a bad word. 
Um, the word in the Greek, in the, the scriptures were written in Greek, is dread demon. That's the meaning of religion. Even in our English, the la- it comes from the Latin word. The root word there is leg. It's to tie or, or to bind. So religions are invented by men, and they bind people. They don't free people. And I even go as far as to say that Jesus Christ himself is not a member of the religion that claims his name. Now, Martin, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to get your reaction to this horrific situation that's occurring in the Catholic Church right now. You say you uh, were raised a Catholic, so right. was I. This situation with the Roman Catholic priests is just, it seems like it's out of control. Yeah, it does. You know, and this is the strange thing. I'm not surprised because I've... I see it as a system. I mean, I'm right now, and I know this will make some folks mad, but I feel I can talk about the Catholic Church having been in it for 20 years and come out of it. The emphasis is on the outward. It's on how things look, and it's crunch time, especially for the priest. They're under such scrutiny. I'm not excusing them, but the whole system, I think, is geared to make a person crack. It's like you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, and you're under constant scrutiny and in human beings george that produces the very thing you're trying to to stop is produced by the constant thou shall not thou shall not thou shall not let me tell you what bothered me the most as a kid my protestant friends would not go to confessionals and i kept saying to them well you're going to go to hell and they went no we're not and i said well yes you are how how come i have to go whenever I commit a sin right. into this little room and confess to this priest who's in this other room. Well, and, 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 and how come you don't? And you know what? For years, Martin, I couldn't understand that. For years. Well, that, that, that's the same with me. I mean, I can remember today the, the fear of standing in front of that door waiting for your turn to go in and tell somebody that you didn't necessarily like uh, all about the bad things that you did, and to be reminded of those things every month, uh, it was just, a, you were sin conscious. You were always thinking about your failings. And to me, I mean, I think human psychology proves this out. The more you focus on the, those things, the more you end up doing those things. It's not a free thing. It's a scary thing, isn't it? I was scared to death. Do you believe in a creator? Oh, yes. Give me your views of that. Well, I believe that uh, all is out of God. Um, e- even the things that appear to be wrong in, in in our world, and we're talking about evil, even this thing in in the in the Catholic Church, I see that all is out of God for a purpose. I think God is. I mean, my view of the Creator is is huge, and I challenge anybody uh, to call tonight and paint a larger picture of God. I would love to have a larger picture of him than I do, but I see everything as out of him. Everything. And everything's working toward a purpose. And the purpose is ultimately good, even though it uses intermediate evils. Do you believe that uh, God, whatever your definition of God is, is within everybody, good and bad? Yes, because the Spirit of God causes everything to exist. The Spirit of God is in, in the flowers. It's, it, it's, in, it's in the bugs. It's in the ants. So it's for sure in human beings. I don't think any human being can even stand on his two feet. Not even uh, Saddam Hussein can stand on his two feet without the Spirit of God in a measure. And that's the whole difference, I think, with spirituality is a spiritual person, a person who begins to perceive the existence of God has a greater measure of the Spirit than Saddam Hussein has. And so it's all in a, it's all how much of it, how much of it. But it does take some to cause there to be life. Isn't it amazing, Martin, that some kill in the name of God as the terrorists did on 9-11? This is why, exactly, this is why I distrust, or I should use a stronger word, I hate religion because there have been more crimes, there have been more, much, more murder, more killing accomplished under the banner of religion than any other thing. And there's a quote that I heard, I just love it, I think it's so applicable. Religion is the greatest cloak that evil ever had. Hmm. And it's so deceptive, you see, because it's whitewashed. Every religion is whitewashed. Here's the avenue to God. But you people are, are mass murderers. Oh, but still, this is the way to enlightenment. 
And so it's either obvious like that or in the, in the Western religions in Christianity, it's a lot more subtle. But so, it's so the same but, thing going on. But are you saying, Martin, that everybody who goes to church specifically during Easter, during Christmas, that they're, they're wrong? I don't think they are. I think the system, that's the way I'd like to say it, is the system is rotten. The system condemns. The system, well, you know, being coming through the Catholic Church, produces guilt and feelings of inferiority and fear before God. So I think of the people, a lot of the people that go to the church don't realize that. I think it's something that works into the fabric of, of, of their lives. They don't realize the effect that their own religion or their dogma is having on them. So I don't say as much that the people are evil because I think a lot of cases they're ignorant of what's going on, but the system's definitely rotten. Well, if you believe in God, then you've got to believe in Satan, the devil, right? Yes, I do. But, you know, I've been to churches. I mean, I, I, have, I have been around uh, after I quit the Catholic Church, and I've been in churches where people are getting around and they're yelling at the devil, right? And anything that's ever gone wrong in the world, it's the devil. Like Philip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. And all the devil's getting all this credit. And really, you know, I see Satan as a tool of God, as a, a tool God is using to break down, to humble people. Now, that's going to make some people upset because the Christian world has the devil in his own sovereign realm. To me, that's scarier. I mean, that is terrible. How can you sleep at night if you think that, uh, that, uh, that the devil has, can outmaneuver God somehow or that he can mess up your life? Are you advocating that people quit the church and just do whatever they want to do within, them, within, within themselves? No, I would not. I would say within themselves. Yes, I'm advocating advocating that everybody quit organized religion. That sounds radical, but it's really not, um, because I, I I think that there's a lot of wrong information. There's a lot of hypocrisy in the organized church. Now, I'm not saying go off, be your own god. Uh, I think that uh, we need to get back to the scriptures. I believe in the Word of God, the inspiration of the original scriptures, anyway, and that. Through learning more about God through the scriptures, we can have a right walk with him. And it doesn't have to be in the box, in the institution. It can be anywhere. All right, stay with us. My guest is Mr. Martin Zender, his book, How to Quit Church Without Quitting God. I want to get your reaction to some of the things you heard. I will open up the phone lines now a little earlier than normal. 314-969-5877. Toll free, one 550 ktrs star ktrs on your cell phone. We're going to do a quick weather test and then a commercial break. Then I'll be right back on the Big 550 KTRS. Just a weather test. You're not done until you've been to Dunn's. Welcome back. I'm George Norrie, and this is KTRS 550 on the dial. My guest is Martin Zender, author of the book called How to Quit Church Without Quitting God. We're talking about faith versus church. 969-5877. That is our phone number. We'll go to the phone calls very shortly. When you wrote this, Martin, uh, did you write it and then feel, my gosh, what am I, what am I saying here? Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah, because it's so radical for people to realize. I, I think the most shocking thing in the book is that to find out that Jesus Christ himself, who I should say I believe in as my Savior. Make that perfectly clear at the you outset. All right. I believe in Jesus Christ. I just don't believe that he himself is a member of the religion that claims to own the franchise on him. In, in other words, what I'm saying is that Christianity has become another religion, even though Christ's name is on mm -hmm. it. So he himself would not be welcomed in the Christian religion. He would not want to join the Christian religion. I mean, can you imagine uh, the Methodist Church asking Jesus, well, we can't accept you unless you sign our statement of faith. And, oh, by the way, you know, were you baptized on Wednesday? And uh, did you repent of all your sins? You know, you didn't drink wine yesterday, did you? Did you? Maybe the Baptists would ask. I mean, come on, that is... That's crazy, but I think that would happen. I really do think that the man has put a higher standard on spirituality 
and Jesus Christ himself. All right. Well, let's go to the phones, and you have opened yourself up. So I'm ready. You're on your own. Okay, let's thanks. go to you, Dwayne. You're on the Big 550. Hi, Dwayne. Hi. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, in the Bible, it states that Jesus is the head of the church. Just as, so how can he not be part of the church if he's the head of the church? Then it also says that do not forsake the assembly of the people. Okay. So there's, there's, he says, he said earlier that, that organized religion, you shouldn't go to, that there's no scripture right, to, to right. verify that. Okay, I can prove there. Bring the tithe into the storehouse. So there's script, there's all kinds of scripture saying we should go to church. Okay, let me, that, those are, those are good questions. By church, I mean the organized, re, the organized religion, the outward church, the kind of church people generally think of, like let's go to church or let's build a new church. What time is church? The outside institution. The church that Duane is talking about is the true meaning of church. The Greek word in the scriptures is ekklesia. It means outcalled. That's all it means. It's a body of people. That's the true church. No, you can't quit the true church. The true church as scripture paints that, which is, again, a body of people. What I'm advocating quitting is the system, the building. What time does church start? Well, that's, okay. what, he that's what he says. Don't, you don't forsake the assembly of God. You go to church to edify. You don't go to church because... The person sitting next to you may be a sinner. You're a sinner too. We all are. Well, where does the we go to church to edify ourselves, to build ourselves up, so we can go out and witness for Christ and get other people to be saved, to, so they can trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Church That's is a body of church is a body of people. You can't go to people. I mean, you can go to church when I'm with three or four people. At Walmart, in the parking lot, and we're talking about God. That's an outcall group of people. That's a living organism under Christ. And so we do feed on each other there. Why does that have to happen, Dwayne, in the building? Now, I know the verse you're talking about in Hebrews 10.25, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. But there's so much that has been thrown at that verse, read into it, because it doesn't say how often you're supposed to get together. It doesn't say... Um, what day you're supposed to gather, get together, who you're supposed to, to get together with. There's so much read into that verse that's not there. Let's get to some more calls. Dwayne, thanks for your call. Tara, you're on KTRS on the George Norrie Show. Hi, Tara. Hi, how are you? Good. Well, I will probably be in the minority tonight, but I, it feels so good to hear someone believe exactly what I believe. I, I am a spiritual person. I'm very spiritual. I feel very connected to God in my life. I'm not a religious person. I'm very organized. Religion is so hypocritical to me, and if I were to go to a church, I would feel like a hypocrite. And I just think that organized religion of today is a business, just so, like so, so you many other things. You agree with him? You got a supporter you, here, Sarah. Martin? Thank you. Oh, we're, I do. It, join the it, minority. It, join the minority. It's man-made, it's yeah. man-written, it's twisting the words, and if you go back to literal translations of the Bible, there is so much taught in organized religion that is just completely off the mark. And the very nature of, of judgment and things that go on in, in organized religion just denies the very nature of God, which is love. Exactly. And I just, and if people worried as much about what's going on in their own heart, as what they're trying to get everybody else to think and say and do, we'd all be more spiritual. And Amen. I just agree with you 100%. All right. Thanks Thank for you, your Tara. call, Tara. Uh -huh. Don, you're on the Big 550. Go ahead, Don. Hi, George. Hi, Martin. Hello. I am I am also in the minority then because I feel the exact same way she does. Wow. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Keep them coming, George. People are, maybe What's people are changing. Here? Maybe people are changing. I huh? told you there's a revolution in this country. Well, I don't I like that. In St. Louis, I, anyway. Can you use a different word? I don't, uh, I don't like I believe that, word. that, honestly, too. I mean, I, mine actually came from my grandmother. Um, we were all Presbyterian. Um, and my grandmother, uh, when we were at a, when I was a very early age, had really instilled in us that we did not have to physically go to church uh, in order to love God. Right. And that was uh, something that uh, was just really brought down from my grandmother to my mother to myself and then to my, my own children that uh, we do um, say grace. We thank God every day mm -hmm. for uh, things that, they, that he... Uh, you know, I feel like he's been with us and he's helped us and he might have helped me to get through something, you mm -hmm. know, by asking him and talking to him. But I didn't feel that I had to get up and run to church 
uh, right. to have this conversation with him. I was right there in my car, in my bedroom, in my living room, wherever it happened to be, when I felt the need to talk to him, and he helped, and I didn't have to to get up and go to church. So I, 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 I back you 100%. I used, to, I used to hear, Martin, a long time ago that the kingdom of heaven was within yourself. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good verse. The verse, as, as Don was speaking there, I thought of a question that a woman, the woman at the well asked Jesus. You know, she said that the, you Jews say that Jerusalem is where we ought to worship. But the, we say here in Samaria that the, in this mountain we're supposed to worship. So there she was questioning Jesus about where. Everybody's concerned about where do we worship. And Jesus said something very important. He said, the day is coming when true worshipers, and that's what I'm hearing from these two ladies that have called, true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Nine six nine five eight seven seven. That's our phone number. A couple of you on hold. I'll get to you very shortly. Let's go to Ohio. Charlie, listening to us, according to Howard on the internet. Welcome to the program. Hi, Charlie. Hey, uh, hi, George. Hi, Martin. Hey, Charlie. Hey, uh, gee, I guess, I guess our minority is coming out of the woodwork here tonight. My Join gosh, the club. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that first caller that you had. <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm, go ahead. I, I had a. Uh, kind of a comment or a question about that, see if Martin agrees with it. The guy, uh, he seemed like he does not realize uh, that Martin here is definitely separating between the people who have God in their hearts and the people who assemble in what's uh, called a church by everyone out there, it seems like. But the thing I noticed that... Uh, Maybe Martin agrees with that. Those that go to these buildings in these church and they, they let's say they don't forsake the assembly of themselves mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. but they are tending to put themselves under the authority of men and not under the authority of God and Christ. Mm -hmm. They are uh, allowing another authority in there and that the church, the people, uh, this organization is is now telling them what they are to do when it should be mm -hmm. God inside them telling them what well, to do. Well, I, I agree exactly. with that. Martin, I agree with that. You stay with us. We'll be back with more phone calls. Charlie out there, thank you. Listening on the Internet in Ohio. It's uh, becoming a broad base here for the Big 550 KTRS. I'll be back in a second. We're talking about organized religion. We'll get to all your calls. How do you feel about it? 969-5877. The name of this book, How to Quit Church Without Quitting God. I'll be back in a moment. Don't go away. Most businesses place one call for telephone service. Really? And what you were saying. A lot of problem with what we call uh, organized religion is today is that we have put our religions above the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's where the error has come in there. And we need to get back to the Scriptures. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a cold. Well, you take care Not of that. trying to uh, slander the Catholic Church, but uh, there are some errors in that in that they have put their religion, and they're one of the religions, above the Word of God. Abstaining from marriage, worshiping statues, saying that a man is infallible when the Word says that all have sinned. These things are contrary to the Word of God. And that's where the error has come in at. All right. Well, you know what's interesting, Martin? And here's a, here's a pastor. What, and you're a pastor of what kind of church, James, if I uh, can ask? You would call it Pentecostal church. Pentecostal. All, All right. All right. Yeah, I know, I know that religion and uh, it, that, that uh, I guess you would call Christianity very well. Would you not, Martin? Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Thanks for those comments. Let's it, go. Yeah, that's, that, that's good. In fact, I think that Tara hit on that, too. She said the teachings are wrong, and, and they are. The hypocrisy is what drives some people out of the church and makes the world roll its eyes at the Christian religion. We're saved by grace. Now here's what you have to do. I, I'll tell you what, I'm amazed at the amount of people who agree with you. Let's go. Well, you know, you asked me how I felt as I was writing this book, and to tell you the truth, I had my I had my armor on. Like, I'm ready for this big fight, and what I'm finding is that people are don't, coming well, out of the woodwork. Don't get too cocky yet, Zender. Uh, okay, it's not I'm over yet. Have... It's not over. Let's go to St. Charles. Adam, you're on the Big 550. Hi. Uh, I'm a high school student, and I just want to say my thoughts parallel completely with yours. You do? Yeah. That's um, a good man. That's another one. Tell me why. And you're such a young person. How old are you exactly? 17. 17. Me and my have boys you... are having this exact same conversation today. Have you always felt this way, Adam? Oh, uh, no. I was raised in Christianity and going to church and all that, but 
there's nobody that can tell me I was born in sin. There's no way I believe it. And, uh, I don't need any medium to be spiritual through the church, you know. Well, I, I think we we need Jesus Christ. You're making a, you're saying you still need Jesus Christ uh, between God and man. Well, I'll tell you one thing though, Martin. Uh, maybe organized religion has a problem if there are so many people out there who feel this way. Well, I mean, a big uh, problem. Yeah. It, this is an economic thing too, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's where you know I hate to say it, but they're feeling the crunch. There's an exodus going on, and they are, they're feeling feeling the crunch there, but I give the people credit for spirituality. To me, these people that are not going to church like Adam, people might be telling guys like him, you're not spiritual. And Charlie said that people tend to put the teachings of man above the teachings of God. They also tend to look down on other people that don't go to church. But I say that the people like those that are calling tonight, they're spiritual. They're more spiritual than those even inside the institution, because they can see the problems with it. All right, let's go to you now, Dave. Welcome to the Big 550. Go ahead, Hi, David. George. Yes, sir. I'm with the last two or three or four. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. I just, I just believe that, well, my belief started when the, when the Lutheran Church started, uh, started in telling me what how I could do with my family and how I could not do with my family and whether I could be divorced or not be divorced and... I mean, being a Christian is one thing, but when they come in and try to, to manipulate your family, you and everybody around you, and that's after donations to their church and paying to go to their school, then they're trying to run your life on top of it. Nope, I'm like this gentleman here. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Almighty God, and I don't yeah. believe a church has to be the temple. Martin, I guess I won't be playing that song, Give Me That Old Time Religion Tonight, huh? <laughs> No, not tonight. Thanks for the call, Dave. Stay with us. We'll be back. We'll take final phone calls next on the Big 550. If you want to get on, give it a try. 969-5877. When you visit us, you're part of the family. Welcome back. I'm George Norrie. Let's talk very quickly about your book, Martin, before we go to the final phone callers who are on hold. Where do you get it? Uh, well, you can go into any bookstore and ask for it. If they don't have it, you can order it. Um, you I, order... I assume it's not in any Christian bookstores, is uh, it? Not that I know. <laughs> or at least it's not there for long. I wouldn't think so. Um, martinzender.com is my website. Martinzender.com. Spell your name? M-A-R-T-I-N-Z-E-N-D-E-R. All right, and you can order good. online there. Uh, my publisher, Stark and Hartman, has a toll-free number. You can order there if you want. Uh, it's one eight six six eight six six book. Simple enough. Let's go to final calls. Keith, you're on the Big Five Fifty. Welcome to the program. Hello. Yes, I sir. Just, I just nice not to be alone. Hey, I Keith. thought I was the only one. And uh, <laughs> are you another and, one? Yeah. I just there's not too many people you can talk to this about. I guess. Well, about this I tell you too, what. I guess, and, the. Uh, the club is coming out tonight in full force. But, you know, I think that's what I thought. I thought the same thing that Keith is saying. There's not many people we can talk to about that. And I think the problem is we've assumed that, and we haven't talked. It's like the emperor's new clothes. You know, it takes one little kid to stand up and say, hey, the emperor's naked. All of a sudden, everybody jumps in and says, yeah, you're right. So I think as more people are, are, are confessing their concerns about the organized church. And That's everybody else, and everybody's going, is. yeah, I felt the same way, you know. That's mostly what it is, is the trouble I've had uh, digesting the different things going on in the different churches. I've been to the Catholic Church, uh, Southern Baptist. I've joined a lot of different churches trying to find a home, mm -hmm. and none of them I've been able to completely... It, it's hard to take the hypocrisy, and it's That's hard it. for me to buy into something that I don't fully believe in, so I end up sitting there feeling like a like an outsider or a hypocrite, mm -hmm. and, and that's not what I want to be. That's not what I'm looking for. No, but see, you're using your own mind. You can think for yourself, and there are a lot of hypocrisies, and that's a common theme I think is coming out with some of these calls, is there is the double talk, and people who still think for themselves say, wait a minute, something's not right here. And I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, you have the spiritual sensitivity to see that. Let's go, let's go out to Milstadt now. Matt, you're on the Big 550. Hello, Matt. Hi, thanks for taking my sure call. Sure thing, my pleasure. I think I am in the minority tonight. Oh, you're the other one. You do no, have... No, no, no. Um, I agree with everything you say about organized religion. Uh-huh. 
However, I, I don't really believe in God at all. I don't believe that Jesus Christ did, has risen from the dead. Well, then you really are in the minority. I really am. Yeah, that's, that's really in the minority. Um, I'm, not, I'm not in that minority. I kind of I understand. I kind of feel that uh, you know, you're talking about churches being man-made and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Well, the Bible was really man-made, too. It's a story. Well, and let me ask you. It really happened, but, but the stories we tell about them are man-made, and I think that they're... Um, I just don't. I just don't buy it. Well, Matt, Matt, let me ask you this: Has the church's twist on the scriptures turned you from God? Has well, the church been a vehicle? But I, I think the scriptures themselves, mm-hmm. even to me, I think that God is something so far beyond man's comprehension that we couldn't possibly begin to write it down and and understand it. I, I just think that it's it's everything out there in the entire universe that we just cannot even begin to grasp. I think the best we can do is. Live it one with nature. I wouldn't say I'm a pantheist. I'm really an atheist. But um, just do the best we can to, to uh, you know, I, I'm a kind person. I believe in giving and helping and making the world a better place for everyone around me. But I just don't, I'm just not a religious person. I'm not spiritual either. And I was wondering what your comments were on that. All right, go for that, Martin. Well, God made you that way. I, everything good about you, Matt, is of of God, and uh, I thank God that you're going to see that someday and see why you're the way you are, where your goodness comes from, where that wellspring is. That's that's what I rejoice. Martin, about. we'll have to get you back again. Let's take another call. Let's go to you, uh, Larry, in St. Charles. Welcome to KTRS. Hi, Larry. Uh, hi. How is going there? Um, I'm doing well, thank hi, you. Hi, Larry. Yeah. Hi, Martin. Um, I have to agree with you there. Um, I'm a Catholic myself, but. It's, I've gone to several churches uh, in my life, and I always feel when I'm sitting in these churches like it's I'm just you know putting on putting on an appearance. I think that organized religion is more of a social thing than anything else. I'm not really getting anything spiritual out of it. Well, you know what? Obviously, Larry is not alone, is he? And I think that you know after nine one one, or should I say before nine one one, people looked at the church that way—a social thing, a place to go. But uh, people have really serious questions now, and a donut and a hug is not going to get it for them. They want answers; they're not getting it in the organized. Well, I, I don't think nine eleven really did anything other than to make people a little more awakened at their yeah. own spirituality. That, that, but I, I think they were asking hard questions. I mean, we all asked hard questions of Billy Graham uh, two days after the, the tragedy, I think, or the day after, and uh, even Billy Graham wasn't sure of the answers. So people are looking for the answers, and I would tell Matt, I think it was, that the answers are in the Scriptures. Look, we've got everybody else on hold, but the clock has got us, Martin. Ooh, okay. First of all, to those on hold, uh, I will have open lines at 11 o'clock. If you want to call back then and react to what you just heard, we do that quite a bit here on uh, Night Talk with the Night Hawk, George Nori. So uh, you may do that. And as for you, Mr. Zender, you got out of here pretty unscathed. I I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I... St. Louis is a fine town. Well, your timing was good. <laughs> okay. I'll see you. Martin Zender's Thank book, you, How to Quit Church Without Quitting God. And I'll be back in a moment. Jimmy Cristo and Steve Gontram with me from the Harvest Restaurant. We're going to have some fun next hour, and we're going to give away some prizes. chair Martin you've been called by Julia Farrell of the Washington Times one of the world's foremost experts on why people quit church you think church is expendable it's not only expendable it hinders spiritual growth uh, I believe one of the main reasons the world rejects Jesus Christ is that it thinks 
He's a member of the religion that carries his name. They think he goes to church or that if he would come back, he would be the first one in line on Sunday morning. If only, this is what I wish, if only the world realized how much Jesus hates hypocrisy, ice cream socials, repetitive worship songs, they would get the heck out and they would never look back. I saw a bumper sticker recently, and it's one of the few Christian bumper stickers I've ever seen that I've actually liked that's actually made sense to me, and it said, I have no problem with God, it's his fan club I can't stand. How many people do you think really want to get out? Lots. Uh, millions of church people today, I think, secretly want to quit church, but they balk because they think that if they quit church, they're going to be quitting God. But that is so not the case because God and His Son, they quit organized religion years ago. In fact, they were never members of organized religion, obviously, I think. Not one person in the Bible, uh, Nathan, ever went to church. The church is a people. It's not an address on Main Street. You don't go to it. You are it. Do you think there is a spiritual revolution in this country? Yes, there is a spiritual revolution. Everybody's reporting it, newspapers, magazines. Uh, people are getting fidgety. They're leaving institutional churches. And I give them credit. I give them lots of credit. The world might call them backsliders, like, oh no, you've quit church. But I call them spiritually intuitive. And it's a good thing. People sense that, you know, a factory can make a good Twinkie, but you cannot produce men and women of God on an assembly line. What do Baptist seminaries produce? They produce Baptists. What do Methodist seminaries produce? Methodists. How do you produce men and women of God? That's the question. It's exclusively the work of God's Spirit. You give people credit for recognizing this. Yeah, I do give people credit for it. Spiritual people are smart. Spiritual people have always been smart. It's spiritual intuition. And the clergy, they don't realize this. They don't realize some people are actually starting to think for themselves and they can smell the hypocrisy from the pulpit from 100 cubits away. It's that intuition. It's that inner intuition I'm talking about. So there is no way Jesus Christ would be a Christian. No, that's right. Jesus Christ would never be a Christian. Christianity today has become a social club. And Jesus Christ is not that exclusive. In fact, this is one of the best reasons to leave church, that Jesus Christ is not a Christian. So what you're saying is you can leave the institution without leaving Jesus. That's right. You can talk to him. You can talk about him. You can do it in your home. You can do it at the office with coffee, tea, beer, hanging out with friends. You do not need um, sad organ music, even exciting organ music. You don't need any of that. You can do it without getting up early on your only day off. I mean, what's not to like about this? I can even show you in Scripture uh, where people quit, left, walked away from status quo religion, and they thrived. In fact, Nathan, I think you're going to know a lot of these names. Uh, Abraham, Jesus, Peter, Paul. You probably already know that people in the Bible who stayed institutionalized, like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they, um, they suffered from chronic mood problems, and they killed happy people, including the people I mentioned, Jesus, Peter, Paul. I know you've often tried to imagine what would happen if Jesus returned today and actually walked into a Christian church. Oh, I know how it would go. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. He was despised and we did not esteem him. This is the unwanted Jesus, the Jesus without a place today in the religious fast lane. If this man ever did show up in a modern Christian church, every I would turn from him. He would be the strange one, the weird person, the troublemaker who would tilt the entire system until every single alarm bell rang. So unless Jesus wore a robe, a beard, a name tag, he would receive the right foot of fellowship in nearly every Christian church in America. What does he come to do? Uh, let's say he comes to teach on his accomplishments at the cross. 
If the people could recover from his embarrassing appearance, which I doubt they'd be able to do, there is no way that they are going to tolerate his teaching. And that's going to be the beginning of the end for him. The beginning of his slow death is his teaching. Because he is going to herald the cross, and he's going to herald what the cross meant for all sinners. And this is what he's going to say. God has allowed us to know the secret of his plan, and it is this. He purposed long ago in his sovereign will that all human history should be consummated in Christ, that everything that exists in heaven or earth should find its perfection and fulfillment in him. Done. You're dead. That would seal his fate. Those words would seal his fate because Christians will not share their heaven with sinners. That's that. They're saved. Everybody else is a dirty, rotten sinner. Their minds are made up. They're not going to have it. And for Jesus, it'd be just like the old days, except the persecution would be cleaner. Some guy named Larry would call him into the office and say, you know, we really don't want you coming here anymore. So off he would shuffle, just like the old days, off to some farmhouse or some, uh, some drinking establishment where other happy rejects would be waiting and dying to hang upon his every word. So you got to see this. The agony of Jesus Christ, the agony he experienced, was not being cast out of bars or uh, drinking establishments, or even whorehouses. He hung out with the people there. No, the agony he experienced was getting kicked out of temples. He was never kicked out of a farmhouse in his life or a drinking establishment. It was the agony of being kicked out of of temples, of religious places, of learning. It was the agony, Nathan, of being hated by the perfumed people, the pious people. That's what made him cry. That's what sent him to the mountains every morning before the sun came up to pray. And the, these Christians who would persecute him today, they can't share this depth of suffering. The suffering I'm talking about is the agony of being hated by religious people. They can't share that, and they wonder how they could. Uh, the world hates Christians, but that's nothing. The world hates them because they're a bunch of hypocrites. That's nothing. Anybody can do that. What's that compared to being hated by people who wear gold crosses around their necks? Try that. Um, the suffering of Christ is the most terrible suffering there is. It's the pain of being persecuted by religious people. This kind of suffering, again, can't happen to Christians. It can't happen to them because they are the religious people. Here's the entire problem. Truth has left the Christian religion. The truth that Jesus loved is gone. It's been replaced with stuff. And here's what it's been replaced with. Uh, it's been replaced with popularity, with entertainment, with belonging, with friendship, with self-help, self-confidence, uh, with political involvement, professional music, rallies, screaming, crying, the wearing of gold crosses, the wearing of Jesus jewelry, t-shirts, uh, Christian soldiers involved in politics trying to save the world for God because he can't do it. You know what the really sad part about all this is? All this crap is done in the name of the one who would turn over every single table of these people and drive them out of town with a homemade whip.